party people. So, first of all, got a new background. Really liking it. Not even sure if you can see the whole thing in this video because I think I need to get a little table that's a little bit higher up. But, you know, got some fresh flowers. Just kidding, they're fake. And got my skull back. Uh, I wanted to record a video in my first video I ever made. It's called Highlighting Like a Boss. I'll link it down below so you can check it out. Um, I talked about fan brushes and I basically said, why spend a bunch of money on a fan brush when you can get them at the art supply store for three dollars? This Morphe one was like eight bucks. This one was three dollars. And they have natural hair brushes too, so don't give me none of that. It's synthetic and synthetic. Does the same thing that a regular fan brush would do. When I said that, I had this idea that I would do a full face makeup just using brushes that I got at the art supply store. So I went out and I bought a bunch of brushes. So we are doing a full face with only brushes from the art supply store. It's easy. I do my whole full face with art supply store brushes. I'm gonna hold them and keep shoving them at you like it's a baton. Just put them down here. If you wanna, I don't know, see something interesting for once, then watch this video. Yeah. So I think we're gonna apply my primer with this big ol' brush. This is a Princeton Preferred Synthetic Filbert 16. So the primer I'm using is a Nivea Men's Aftershave Balm. I'm just applying that all over my face and then letting that soak in and then spritzing some Smashbox primer water all over my face. That's my everyday routine. It works for me. I like it. Fuck, why am I doing this first? We're doing it first today. Normally I do this after my foundation. Breen Fart. He had a Breen Fart. Premier Amethyst number 177T. I love how I'm telling you guys this. Like, you're actually going to go to the store and buy them. Well, you might. Well, this is what it is. Normally I put concealer on after my foundation because I think it's wasteful. Unless you have like some really, really heavy scarring or blemishes that you want to cover up, I think, or like dark, dark circles, I think it's wasteful to put concealer on. And then foundation because your foundation is going to end up covering up a lot of the stuff that you think needs to be concealed. So then we're going to go in with True Match Lumi W1-2. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of my airbrush foundation today because I'm running low on my Elsie foundation and I just really like to save that for special occasions. I really love this foundation but I feel like I go through it so quickly. Like I just bought it in January and it's not like I use a whole bunch. I do like one, one and a half pumps. Let's just do a couple pumps here and a couple squirts there. So nasty. Just a couple. And I think I'm actually going to go in with this concealer brush. And kind of place it all over my face this way. And then blend it in with that sponge. And just kind of pat it. Kind of like you're slapping yourself in the face. That's making you look better, not worse. Ow. This doesn't feel very good. Foundation, obviously it's not perfect. So we're gonna go in with a little concealer and try and cover it up that way. And from slapping my face, I've made my skin red. Not perfect. Nobody's perfect. You gotta work it. 
my liquid contour, I am using the RCMA Cream Foundation Palette, just one of the darker colors in there, just focusing it on my cheekbones, a little bit on my nose. Then we're going in with a square flat brush and kind of buffing it in that way. Oh yeah. Now it's time to set the face. Using the RCMI No Color Powder, mix the little bit and I banana powder. We are going to go in with, I wanna go in with this little round mop, half inch. Little brush. This is by Simply Simmons. Simply Simmons coming through. This powder helped a lot ish. Hoping contouring and bronzing will help out a lot more. Speaking of contouring. We are going to go in with the Lorac Pro Palette. Um, using a mixture of light and medium contour. We are going to take, you know what? Let's start out with this big fluffy brush again. Just get a little bit. And just start buffing. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. All right, this side over here is getting a little wonky, but we're gonna fix that with baking. The only reason I'm baking in this video is because I got a little wonky. All right, in my skin, you can tell it's starting to get a little red. Um, I just have really sensitive skin when people touch it. I'm not allergic to anything, it's just like, you know, if you scratch my neck, it looks like I have a hickey. And yes, I used to get teased about that all the time. So thank you to all those people in my elementary school classes that used to make fun of me for it. I now have social anxiety issues because of you. Just kidding. I don't give two shh talking mushrooms. All right, now because I have a feeling this is gonna be really messy, I'm going to put some translucent powder under my eye. I just have that feeling, just got that inkling. Just the usual suspect going on my eyelids, MAC Pro Longwear Concealer and using just a flat concealer brush to put it all over my eyelids. Okay, a little flat brush that I picked up. This is P47T by Premier. You know it's funny how long these things are. I feel like a magician or like a conductor or a painter. Yeah, that too. And I'm going in with Stila Kitten. It's my favorite single eye shadow ever. And The Too Faced Pretty Rebel palette. Miss Sparkles. We want something with a little pizzazz. And make sure you're keeping the black eyeshadow below your crease. You know, just in case you want to replicate it. I'm going in with Sybil by Davina Cosmetics. This is a pink shade just to use as my transition lid shade to kind of make sure that harsh line between the black eyeshadow and kitten is kind of untraceable. Now to start working on our crease and our brow bone, I will be taking Limit, Nooner, and Strange throughout my crease and transition shades. Simply Simmons Round. Just windshield wiper motions like you would normally do with any other brush. We are using Nooner first and then going up with Limit to transition. Going some more of that black. I wanted a little bit more pizzazz on my eyelid, so I went back in with Sybil just to really amp up that color. I do have a little smudge brush, so we're gonna take some black eyeshadow and smudge it. Concentrate the black eyeshadow on your outer corners and then bring Sybil into the middle so it meets up with your inner corner highlight. 
Okay, we're gonna take champagne pop and a clean. I got two of these brushes. These um, Simply Simmons a little wash one inch brush. Um, I picked it because it's natural hair and I feel like natural hair brushes pick up on stuff a little bit better. I think they do absorb a little bit more of the product, but as far as laying it down, like with synthetic, I feel like uh, if you get a lot on your brush, we're gonna go with a fan brush. I got one of these. Um, with synthetic, I feel like it picks up a lot of product, and then it just lays it all on your skin. So if you're really going for that intense highlight, you can see the difference, right? Then you probably want to go with a synthetic brush. And with my Wet n Wild bronzer, we're going to place that in between our contour and our highlight. And then we're going to go in and add a little bit of blush in there. This is just a NYX Baked Blush in Foreplay. Just to add a little sassiness. I'm going to fill in my eyebrows because my dip brow is no more. And all I have is this. And I don't really like using eyeshadow. So I'll be right back and then we're going to do some wing liner. So without a doubt, I could find an angle brush at the art supply store. This is great if you want to practice gel liner and you don't want to spend $8 on a eyeliner pencil or brush, an angle brush. They have a bunch of different sizes. They're like $3. Synthetic, same thing. So we're going with the NYX gel liner. My skin has had a chance to settle down after, whoo, that redness got a little crazy for a second. I'm not mad at it. I'm gonna do it again? Probably not. Am I gonna keep some of these brushes? Maybe, for myself. I mean, okay, so here's the thing, you guys. With eyeliner brushes, I feel like you can kind of get away with going to the art supply store. Some, I think some of the concealer brushes are great. Some of these, like, fluffier brushes like this are great um, for personal use. If you're a makeup artist and you have this in your kit, I don't, I don't know. I just think you're, like everything in my kit is high end. You know, I have a couple things here and there where I've tried high end and maybe I don't like the high end as much as I like the drugstore or the lower end brand. Um, but majority of stuff in my kit is high end and I think people are paying for a luxury service when they book you if you are a makeup artist. So I think you need to keep nicer stuff in your kit, obviously. Um, and that includes makeup brushes. So I think if you want to use them for personal use, and I, hey, I might even keep this as a blush brush because it's kind of nice. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Erin Kelly Makeup if you'd like to see little mini tutorials that I do. Um, I post everyday looks that kind of stuff. If you're on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to be nice to people because it really is not that hard and you just never know what people are going through. So, brushes from the art supply store and try it out for yourself. Let me know what y'all think. Okay, bye.